Welcome to Monday morning here in Teen Epic Network. And there's no Monday morning like the Monday mornings in Teen Epic Network. How is everyone doing? I hope that you're coming on a fantastic weekend. I know that you have been busy out there sharing the wonderful sprays, the vitamin D, the B boost, the Slim by 10, the Still Energy, all the wonderful sprays that we have, all the amazing testimonies. I pray that you went out there and told someone about what we are doing here at Team Effort Network, and I hope that you invited them to listen into this call where they will hear and learn more about why we are so excited about what we are doing. Well, this is your host, Pastor Nisha McDowell, my business partner, Pastor Del Wafer. Family, you know how we do it. The line is open. Introduce yourself. Where are you calling in from? Delva Williams, Baltimore, South Carolina. Good morning, team. Woo! Good morning, Delma. How are you? I am well, thank you. This is Harriet Hagan. Maryland. Welcome. Who's that from Maryland? Harriet Hagan. You know, All Mother right. Hagan. Hi. Hi. How are you? <laughs> Welcome Merci. to the call. How are you? I'm fine. Praise <laughs> the Lord. <laughs> John Joseph, Evansville, California. All right, Captain Joseph, welcome to the call, sir. Good to be on the call. Yes, sir, it is. Can't wait to see you in Vegas. Yes, I've <laughs> already got my ticket. <laughs> I've got mine, too, Pastor. I've got I mine, too. Excuse <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> me, coming, family. Who is with us this morning? Go right ahead. Uh, you got Keith Moji from Only Merlin. I'm all fired up. Keith ain't messing around, y'all. Let me tell you, Keith ain't playing. <laughs> Keith gonna be driving in a brand new Mercedes Benz. He's doing what he's doing. Oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the car, Keith. Good to hear you this morning. Thank you, Pastor Denise. Thank That's you. Right, you're welcome. Keith, they coming, family. Who is with us this morning? Keith, they coming, family. This is the team effort lifestyle call where you will hear things. That will move you from faith to facts, from facts to faith to action is what we take here to make it happen. So the line is open. This is a team effort lifestyle call. Introduce yourself. Where are you calling in from? Jesus greetings. Paul Jackson, Fairmont Heights. Good morning. Woo! Mr. Jackson, smooth and sunny. Yes. How are you, sir? <laughs> doing great, doing great. Magnificent day today. Magnificent day today. Beautiful. I know you got your ticket from Vegas. I know you got you your ticket right with you. <laughs> That's all I've been <laughs> thinking about. That's all I've been thinking about. <laughs> I know they anyway. the machine is free. I know Frida got hers too, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We'll be there. <laughs> in numbers. In numbers. That's right. Ooh, in numbers. Love it. Well, welcome to the call. So you and Frida, welcome to hear you this morning. Family, I'm going to mute out in just a minute. If you like, introduce yourself or you call it up on. To, to the millions around the world, let's get ready for Vegas! You don't want to miss out for nothing in the world when Ken meets up with Vegas, baby. <laughs> I don't think Vegas will ever be the same. Not at all. Uh-oh. It's all. Oh, it's all. Oh, it's all. Oh, oh, you there oh, in the yeah. making. Sheila Taylor met Duffy from Atlanta, Maryland. Ooh. Good morning, Miss Sheila and Duffy. I know you got some chicken to the tennis stand again. I know you got some chicken. <laughs> don't have it yet, but we'll have it. No problem. Oh, Not be a problem. Come on, girl. Come now on. We'll <laughs> I know you're ready to try Vegas. <laughs> yes, yes, definitely. <laughs> well, well, the conference is now in presentation mode. Your line is muted. Turn on to the team of the lifestyle call for the first time, maybe, maybe not. But just in case you're wondering, what are these tickets? What are you talking about, Vegas? Tickets for what? Life changing event. Well, what do you mean, Vegas? And never be the same. Well, family, we're celebrating our one year birthday anniversary. One year of changing people's lives, one prayer, one prayer at a time. And we're having what's called the Big Ten 
Sheriff and Karen's the birthday party celebration with Chief Effort Network is going to take place Saturday, March the 14th, 2015. And if you really want to grow your business and take it to the next level, you need to get your ticket. If you haven't gotten it already, to be at that event. That is one event in Team Effort Network you did not want to miss. That is history in the making. This is our very first year in celebrating the 10 vitamin sprays. This is history in the making. Change tickets went on sale Friday, and I understand that folks are just buying them up like candy canes. I got mine. I went right on them. Boom. Got my tickets. I ain't playing around. Kevin Vaughn put out an awesome video this weekend on why you need to be at this tennis extravaganza. He puts on Facebook, so get a chance. Please go on there and look at the video email that he put together using our sister tools, My Video Talk, to promote the tennis extravaganza. And you get an early bird special for those who are getting your tickets this month. You know, Mel and Amy Gill are always so graceful. They're always so giving. They're giving us an early bird special for those who don't like to drag their feet, for those who are serious about doing what they're doing, those who go in there and get it early, you get them, you get a discount. So the tickets are at a discount right now. Um, after starting January, they will be going up to $95. You don't want to wait. And after that, they're going to be going up to $110. Why would you want to pay $110 for a ticket where you can get it at a better price right now? So go to your back office today, if you have enough already, and get your tickets to the 10 Extravaganza. Woo! Can't wait. It is going to be awesome. Also, let's not forget the December uh, Frenzy promotion. That is going to take place. This is the promotion we have for the month of December. Let's let you ask it back to December 1st. That's going to take place until the 20th of December. Now, some of you have already... I uh, just need one, one, I think one or two more people will qualify for this. But what you do, you get two new business partners on the diner package. You know, the great thing about this one, they don't have to be on your left or your right. They can both be on your right or they can both be on your left. You can split them up whichever way you want. As long as you have two new business partners on the diamond package and help those two to do the same thing, you get yourself a free mini iPad. Come on, family, you can do that. Those who haven't won one already, go ahead. And if you have already won one, win another one and give it as a gift if you want to. I'm going for it again. So, family, we have some great things happening here. You mentioned network. My business partner, Pastor Dale, is out there somewhere taking care of some business. So, hopefully, he'll join us before the call and before we end the call today. Uh, but as you know, this is Motivation of Monday, and we bring on our coach, Nakisha Vaughn. She gave us some things last week that really stirred up the gift that's within. You heard it, so you got to strip that gift that's within. Well, she gives us some things every Monday to kind of stir up that gift that's within you, to get you motivated, to give you ideas, to get you excited, uh, and to put a pep in your step <laughs> that you can get out there and really, really just blow up what you're going to hear too much in that work. So let us welcome to the call our coach of Monday morning, Coach Nakisha Bond. Nakisha, are you there? Woo! Good morning, good morning. We're going to Vegas. We're going to Vegas. We're going to Vegas. Don't <laughs> <laughs> get you started this morning. <laughs> oh, you know what, Nikita? I just, I just pictured us as Vegas, just running down the strip, just running through. <laughs> We're going to have so much fun. I am so excited. Excited. So, man, we got to get this thing going. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> I am excited about being I'm just excited about everyone coming. I mean, we're talking about everybody in the quiche, everybody that's in the We're talking about Memo and Christy and Pastor Don Joseph, Nakisha Bond, Terry Whitener, Mel and Amy Kittle. I mean, everybody that's someone from the East Coast, uh, the West Coast, the Hispanic team is going to be there. Everyone that's a part of 10. Is going to be in the house on the trip in Las Vegas, Nevada. And that is going to be a time to remember. Uh, it really is. It really is. I'm excited, girl. I'm excited. We got something to be excited about. Absolutely. Are you ready today, Pastor Denise? I know you're ready. Girl, I'm so ready. I don't know if I'm, I'm sitting here with my tent and my pad in hand. Ready. <laughs> what are you going to share? What are you going to share with us today? Okay. So, last time we were talking, 
Um, I had mentioned something about doing a personal development training, and I'm not sure if this totally qualifies, but I was really asking my question, why is it important for us to personally develop ourselves? And you know what I came down to, Pastor Denise? It really was because this business is about belief. It really is about belief. You know, when you're an employee and you get hired for a job, it's really easy to believe that if you perform this function, they will pay you that amount. So there's not a lot of belief that goes into being an employee. But when you're a business owner, you know, it's really about how much you believe that this business is going to work because that belief is going to determine your actions at the end of the day. So that's kind of what I want to talk about. I want to talk about the two obstacles they kind of are the reason why we need to have personal development. And those are self-interest and employee mindset. So let's talk about the first one. It's not about you. You know, uh, this whole thing about self-interest, you know, you get into the business to make your dreams come true, to help your family, to help all the things that you have going on. And then as soon as you join, you instantly turn that what you want into how you can help somebody else get what they want. So when we start in this business, it's all about us. But in order to grow your team, it has to be about your team. It has to be about your team making money. It has to be about your team advancing. It has to be about your team doing well. And that's a hard transition to make. And the reason that people don't like salesmen is because they feel like when you go think about it like this, when you go into a car lot, you're really trying to find out about the cars. You're trying to see the gas mileage, the engine, you know, if it's a used car, when's the last time it's in maintenance. And you always get the impression that the salesperson will tell you whatever it is that you want to hear so they can close the sale. And that makes us feel uneasy because then we feel like we can't get our questions answered. And so that's the reason why people don't like this business sometimes, too, because it makes them feel like a salesman. A lot of times people don't approach their warm market is because they feel the self-interest and other feel other feel too. So, for example, you know, you go up to someone and you say, hey, I got these new vitamin sprays, and you're thinking that they're thinking that the only reason you're asking them is so that you can make money. And that po- that whole scenario makes your posture seem desperate. So instead of giving people this opportunity and to help them improve their situation, you kind of feel shy, like, oh, you know, maybe they'll think that all I'm doing, doing this for is so that I can make money, and I don't really want to do that because I don't want them to think of me that way. But you know what? You can have everything in life that you want if you just help enough people get what they want. That's a quote by Zig Ziglar. Throwing that out there. And so the other one is the employee mindset. Don't worry, I'll tie these all together and what they have to do with each other. You know, um, this is the difference between an employee mindset and a business owner mindset. Employees are used to being told what to do. And business owners require time management skills and they have to organize their priorities. You know, everyone always says, I don't have enough time. I don't have enough time. But we always make time for the things that we find that are important to us. Employees, there's no accountability for the outcome. And I think this is the biggest thing. You know, I I see this a lot, too, when you talk to employees is that, yeah, I'm just going to do this because they told me to do this, but I don't really care whether or not it's the right thing to do or it's actually going to help grow the employer's business because you were just told to do a task. But when you're a business owner, you have total accountability for the outcome. And so you have to reinforce your why every day about why you're doing some things because you have to be doing things for the right reason when you're in business versus when you're an employee, it's a part of your life. You know, going to work is something that you have to do, but you're always looking for the weekend and you make lots of time planning for the weekend, but maybe not so much time planning for what you're going to do every single day when you go into your work, um, to your job. Versus as a business owner, your business becomes your life and you integrate it into everything that you do. So what am I trying to say? I'm saying this is the reason why we have to develop personally. We have to build that belief in ourselves so that when we approach our warm market, it's not about self-interest. I don't tell people about these sprays so that I can make a buck. It's great that I make a buck when I sell these sprays, but really I'm actually interested in people being able to see a difference what 98% absorption will do for the body. A lot of people don't know that they don't absorb a lot of stuff from their pills. So there's a lot of people who are sick, who are taking medication, who think that their vitamin D medication is going to get them better, or sorry, their prescription of vitamin D is going to get them better, but really their body is not absorbing that. I think that's important for people to know. And so when I start to work on myself, it automatically changes my mindset. So I don't feel that self-interest. Furthermore, when you're transitioning out of being an employee, you have to develop personally because you have to develop those business owner skills in order for you to thrive. Because I don't know if you guys didn't know this, but this is a real full-fledged business. You can file taxes. You can get tax breaks. Did you guys know? I don't know if we've ever done a training about this, but do you know you guys can write off stuff like your cell phone? You can write off it's 
um, stamps. If you have a website, you can write off your website information. There's so many things that you can write off. So this is a legitimate business opportunity. Even though it only costs you less than $400 to get involved in it, it's a legitimate business opportunity. And at the end of the year, everything that you expend for the business, you can write off in a tax return. But you still have to learn how to run your business. Maybe we'll do a training on that some other day, Pastor Denise. On some, yeah. Maybe we can have a professional come on and talk about I mean, I could tell you about it, but maybe we can find someone who's an accountant who can tell people about some of the tax breaks. Because I think sometimes we don't always realize that this is a full-fledged business. And even if you weren't growing your business super, you know, super, super strong, you can still have some great tax advantages just by being a part of it. In fact, that's why some people get involved in network marketing is for the tax benefits. Anyways, I digress. So my point is, is that those are two of the things that we have to overcome. That feeling of self-interest, that feeling that whenever we're talking to people, it's only about us. We have to get it to be about them. And that transitioning, hey, I used to be an employee and people used to tell me what to do all day. Now I'm a business owner. What am I supposed to do with my time? How am I supposed to organize it? What, where, where do I go for help? What, what am I supposed to do? How do you promote? Those are the questions that we have to answer. And so we have to develop personally so that we can overcome some of those things. So what are the things that we can do for personal development? How can we constantly be working on ourselves? So number one, I think I have about 11 here. I have a little bit more time, so I think I will be able to get through them all. Okay, so number one, let's make a commitment to work on your mindset. You know, your mindset is so, so important, and you can always hear the difference between someone with a positive mindset who knows that this business and this opportunity is really going to change people's lives versus someone who's still in the mindset of, well, I'm waiting for the business to change my life before I can go out there and let it change other people's lives. It's kind of weird, right? But you can see where that's won't, that won't work, that kind of mindset. And so we have to have a commitment to work on a mindset that's going to help us to grow our business. Because number two, what you think about determines your life. So this is a quote by um, Mahatma Gandhi. Your beliefs become your thoughts. Your thoughts become your words. Your words become your actions. Your actions become your habits. Your habits become your values, and your values become your destiny. So basically that means is what you believe or uh, – I'm sorry um, – What your beliefs are is what you think about, and what you think about is what you talk about, and what you talk about is what you actually go out there and do, and what you do a lot becomes a habit for you, and these habits become your values, things that you hold personal and dear to you, and then your values become your destiny. I'll give you an example. You know, if you believe that exercise will make you thin, and you start thinking about exercising, making you thin, and you start speaking about, oh, you know, if I exercise, I'm going to lose weight. Then you start to make, um, you start to exercise and you start to probably lose weight and then it becomes a habit and you start to keep that habit. And now it becomes a value, which means that you're not going to just do it because you always do it. You're doing it because you have to do it. And then it becomes your destiny. Now all of a sudden you become thin. And so these are the the same way this business works. You believe this business is going to work. You think about it. You start to speak about it. Then you start to take some action on it. And then those actions become habits that you do every single day. And then those habits turn into values. Like I have to talk to people about this. And then that will create your destiny, which hopefully will give you the business that you've always been looking for. And so it's really, really important that we develop this mindset where we're really believing, not just on a, you know, surface level, yes, I believe, you know, the math makes sense, but on a personal level, I really, really believe that if someone sticks a team effort international and they work the business and they follow the two-by-two system and they expose people and they have their TTPs, they're going to be able to change their life. They're really going to be able to make it. You have to really believe that in order to go out there and take the action. Number three, draw your attention to the positive. So these are all personal development things. Let me me tell you something, guys. This is one of the easiest things to do, but I find this is like one of the hardest things for people to do. It's really easy to be positive. You know, it's a choice. You can have a situation happen to you and you can either be reactionary, you know, just oh my gosh, I can't believe this happened and just start speaking all sorts of negative words. Or you can take that silent moment and pause that little space between, you know, having that input and then what your reaction is going to be. What are, what are you, what are you going to say? What are you going to, how are you going to react? What are you going to say about this particular instance? And is it going to be positive or is it going to be negative? And we're so trained because if you turn on the news, you know, I don't think I've ever turned on the news and that first five or 10 minutes are probably the most negative stories that they could ever think of. They might have a little bit of fluff towards the end, but I never watched the news long enough to get to that. 
but it's always so very negative. Everything in our culture is really negative because they found that that sells. That's what people are kind of drawn to. And so you have to actually go out of your way sometimes to be positive, but you have to draw that positivity into your life, which is why these events are so great. Because when you put a room of this many positive people in one room, all towards a common goal, you'll just see the atmosphere lift. I mean, I don't think I've ever been to one of these events and it ever been negative or people going up there and saying, you know, I tried to do this and it didn't work for me. Nobody's going to be up on stage talking about that. You know, everybody's going to be in a positive frame of mind. Everybody's going to be in that can-do mind. And that's what we have to go out of our way to find is that positivity and to draw that back into our life because that is going to help to reaffirm your beliefs. And remember, your beliefs are going to turn your thoughts. Your thoughts are going to turn into words, which will turn into actions, which will turn into habits, which will turn into your destiny. So it's always important for us to draw attention to the positive. You can always find negative Nellies everywhere you go. They were everywhere. They are a dime a dozen. It is not hard to find someone who can touch. In fact, I could find 10 people who would tell me this business would never work. And I have to go and go away from those people and find the five or three or one person who believes this business is going to work and hang around them and us build our beliefs together. Number four, enhance your skills. You know, these are one of the skills that you have to practice in order to be excellent. Here's a really great story. So last night, you know, we went out and bought new shoes for the kids. And so um, my youngest son, I got him some laces. And so I'm teaching him how to tie his shoes. And so, you know, he tries a couple times. And, of course, you know, he has a problem. I said, you know what? Anyone who learns to tie their shoes, they have to tie it at least 20 times in order for them to get better. And he's like, 20 times? That's so I said, that's just the way it goes. You said, you learn how to do it, and then you got to do it 20 times in order for you to get good. And he went and did it. I think he did it probably about 12 or 15. So he's really excited that he didn't have to take the whole 20 times. But that's the same thing with this business. A lot of times we come into this business, you know, you get on a call like this, you hear it, and you're like, yeah, that's easy. Okay, let's do that. You do it a couple of times, and then mm, what happened? That's the same thing about these business. All of these skills are things that we have to learn. You have to learn about this industry. You have to work on the areas that you feel they're holding you back. If you have a problem with public speaking, you see those people up there and you're like, wow, you know, listen to Memo. He's so amazing. I can't, you know, I don't think I could ever be up there and speak the same way that he speaks. Or, you know, I hear Pastor Denise up there. And she's got her beautiful gown on and she's so excited and I just want to be like that. And I don't know if I can ever be like that. You know, there's a group called Toastmasters and they actually help you. I think it's like $74 for six, uh, six to 12 weeks where you can go out there. You'll be in a class of people who are just like you, varying skills of public speaking. And basically, they just make you speak every single time you go. It's a great way to practice and enhance your skills. If you have a fear of networking or just talking to people in general, go to a chamber meeting. A lot of times you can get into the first one for free. Go in there and just make it a point. Uh, you know, I'm going to talk to five people in the room. I'm going to hand out my cards to five different people to just work on getting over these skills, uh, these fears. The bottom line is, is that these skills don't enhance themselves. You know, a lot of people, they'll hear me on the call and they'll be like, oh, you know, you sound so good. And I'm like, thank you. But, you know, I originally was going to major in television, film and new media production. So I've been on TV and camera since I was in, you know, the sixth grade. So, I mean, this is just a long time. So I've worked on these particular skills. But that may not be something that you worked on. So we all have to work on our skills. And it's just like tying your shoe. It won't happen, you know, if you go up there and you do it once. It's going to happen when you practice and practice and practice and practice and practice. Um, and that's number five, practice until you find your how-to, practice on people. You know, one of the things about this industry that I find really, really interesting is when I first joined, one of the things I wanted to know is what do you say to people? You know, people, they say, go out there and talk to people. What do you say? What do you want me to say when I go out there and I talk to people? Exactly. What is it that the word and the phrasing and what tone should I have? And what type of emotion should I show that's going to, you know, make people respond? And what I found is that it's not a line. It's not, you know, a script. It's not one of those things. You know, you really can't say the right thing to the wrong person, and you can't say the wrong thing to the right person. And so it's really just about developing you. It's a practicing how you are going to be able to talk to people. Because the way that you talk to people is not going to be the way that I talk to people. You know, the way that Pastor Denise talks to people is not going to be the way that I talk to people. And so we have to practice on the way that makes us who we are, very authentic and genuine, and sharing our story. That's why we say more general, more principles. Share your story. Not share this story, because this story might not work for that particular situation. And you don't even know until you get in there and you start listening. 
And so, you know, a lot of this business is not about here's the perfect script of how you're going to do it. It's about being on these calls every single day. It's about listening to people. It's about going to events, about going to TTP, learning all these other people's styles. And then what you're learning, putting that into actual action and practice is what's going to get you better over and over in time. Pastor Denise, maybe I can ask you this. I know you're still on the line. When you, because you told me that, you know, you were new to this business. When they say go out there and talk to people, you know, how did you find your, your, your spiel or how did you find your comfort level to go out there and talk to people when you didn't have any background in this industry at all? You know, I, know I'm throwing you on the have, spot. I didn't have, I, yeah, I didn't have any background in network marketing. I had no idea what network marketing was, but I'm coachable. And if you, it, it struck you that what I have to do, I'm going to do it, but to go, I mean, it was easy for me to walk up to people and just to start talking to them about anything and then to find out, uh, I think you said many times before, if you listen to people long enough, they'll tell you what their need is. So I was also a good listener. I could listen to where, now with start a conversation, but say, oh, hi, how you doing? Nice day. You know, something like that in general. And then people mm-hmm. will start talking. And as you listen to them talk, then they, they will say something that will be like a door open for you to present what it is you have. And so you have to let them finish talking, and you go, oh, wow, guess what happened with me, and guess what I'm doing, and this is where I am. And then the, you know, the conversation kind of rolls with it. But you have to just do it. You just have to go do it. You just have to do it. You don't know what the outcome is going to be, but you just have to make yourself, just like you make yourself do it. You make yourself get up out of bed every morning. Just like you make mm-hmm. yourself get up out of bed, you just got to make yourself do it. Absolutely. And so, you know, I think that's one of the deceptions is that people are waiting for something that's going to drive them to the action. And really, and I know you said this before, Pastor Denise, it really was one of those events that just kind of sparked that belief. And that belief, just the more you acted on it, the more that belief became even more real. And here's number six, is to always take action. And that's what Pastor Denise said. She said two really important things. One, to be coachable. You know, if you do have questions, you always want to go to your upline and you want to get that support of maybe what they did. But at the end of the day, you want to make sure that you take action, you know, listening to people and taking action on the things that you hear. That's really, really important. And your taking action is going to show your measurement of belief. So if you're really, if you, you can tell right now, you don't have to take a quiz or anything. You can just assess yourself right now where you sit. Are you taking massive action in this business? You know, be honest with yourself. There's nobody listening. I'm you know, I can't see if you're raising your hand, but that action that you are or are not taking is your measurement of belief. And if you're sitting there saying, well, I haven't been taking very much action, then you know you need to work on your belief. If you've been taking lots of action, you know your belief is high, and you definitely want to be those people who are out there in the forefront ringing the bell and getting other people on your team, because when your belief is high, that's when people get really, really attracted to you. But that's always a measurement of how much you actually believe in something is how much action you take in it. If you don't believe it, you're not going to take very much action. It's going to become a reinforced belief for you. If you do believe it, you're going to take lots of action. It's going to reinforce that belief for you. So you can either spiral up or spiral down. And then number seven, you know, it's really important that we take responsibility for what is or what isn't happening into your, in our business. We are the CEO. If our business is not doing well, it's our fault. If our business is doing good, it's, it's, it's our fault too, which is, you know, it's good and bad. If your business is doing really, really not what you want it to do, you really have to look at yourself. And this is why personal development is so important because this is something that you're getting paid on your action and your productivity. And if your productivity isn't at the level that you want it to be, you really have to take assessment and say, do I really believe? And if you're saying, I don't know if I really believe, then you know you need to get more plugged into the system, listen to more calls, talk to your sponsor, your upline, get more engaged in the process. Because I can tell you, almost everybody who gets on one of these calls, you leave feeling like you've been a little bit more motivated than you were when you first got on the line. You know, I had a pastor one time who said, if there's nothing else that you can do, just get up and go to church. Because you're going to feel a little bit better when you get out of church. And that's the same thing with these calls, the TTPs, the events, you know, or even running or anything it is. Just get out there and just start doing it. And then, you know, you'll start to see 
your belief grow a little bit from there. And so it's important, number seven, like I said, to take responsibility for what is and what isn't happening in our business. And if you're not getting the results that you want, you have to take responsibility and go in there and get plugged in. And I know I'm being a little hard. I can feel the negativity already in the air. And personal development is never a happy subject. That's why I always say, yes, I am talking about personal development again, because it's all about us, right? You can't blame anybody else on this one. And sometimes that kind of stuff. But you guys are big people and you know, you're the grownups and that's why you get on the call. <laughs> Number eight, marketing and self-promotion. You know, this is really, really important. It's being a product of the product and talking about it. And what does that have to do with personal development? Um, probably not very much, but I still think it's important <laughs> because this is about self-promotion. And we are promoting ourselves in every single way. And so you want to be important. You want to take heed is what is it that you're out there promoting? You know, who are you? Because people aren't just joining the opportunity. You know, it would be great to say that everybody who heard about vitamin sprays and, you know, Melanie and Dev Free Company and binary and dual core double binary, and they just joined right away. It'd be great if everybody saw that, but that's really not the case. A lot of times people are joining you. So what are you out there promoting? And is whatever you're promoting, what you want to be promoting, getting you the results, attracting the same type of people that you want into your business? You know, they usually say, oh, man, I can already feel this is not going over well. But they say like attracts like, right? So if you're getting people in your business and you're saying these aren't the kind of people who, you know, are going to help me grow my business, we have to kind of look within. What are we promoting? What are we saying out there? You know, I, I – um you know, I'll be very honest with you guys. I had an experience when we first came into this industry where, you know, some of the leaders, they were promoting, um, you know, do this, do this, do this. But it wasn't a duplicatable system. It wasn't something that got people in the industry who had that same kind of drive and passion. And so we found that when you put it out there like, oh, you know, you come into this business, it's growing so fast. We're going to be putting people in your lines and da, 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 da. And then all of a sudden people join and they're waiting for you to fill up their lines and you realize that, oh, that's what I've been promoting and that's kind of what I got. And so we have to be pr careful with self-promotion. You know, you just want to make sure you're a product of the product, you're talking about it, you're the leader that you want to follow. Who are the kind of person that you're promoting? And if you're not happy with the kind of person that you're promoting, go out there and change it. Woo! Had to get through that one, Pastor Me. <laughs> so I know. I got to that. <laughs> Thank you. Sometimes we gotta get through the hard stuff. But you know why? It's it's not to hurt anyone's feelings. It's only just to say personal personal development is about per taking personal responsibility for everything that happens in your life, for the thoughts that you think, the words that you say, the action that you take, for us not to be a victim because there's freedom in not being a victim. There's freedom in knowing that you have power and control over your image, over the things that happen, the things that don't happen, and that you can always take heed and go out there and change things. That's really all that it's about. Um, and so um, I think I'm going to go ahead and leave it there because we kind of run out of time. And, um, those are the ones that mostly have to do with personal development. But remember, it's all about belief. And a lot of personal development is getting you over that self, that feeling of self-interest, that feeling that you can't talk to people because people are going to think that you're only talking to them because it benefits you. You know, mm -hmm. when you start to develop personally and you really start to understand what this business is about and what this industry can do for people, and you start to be around people who you've seen that it's done that for them, that builds your belief and it makes it a lot easier to go out there and talk to people. And then getting out of the employee mindset, knowing that you have total, full control responsibility over your business. This can be a $10,000 business. It can be a $1,000 business, a $500 business, a million dollar business. It's all about how you treat it, how you develop personally, how you continue to grow as an individual so that you can make the kind of income that you want to make. And it's not always easy because I'm telling you, if it was easy, we'd all be thin, sexy, and rich. If, if things in life were easy, we would all have everything that we want. It's hard. And it's the people who persist, who continue to get on the call every single day, who continue to go to the events, who continue to build themselves and develop. Every single one of them, I promise you, if you talk to them at the event, they will tell you they had to grow personally in order to get to wherever they are today. And so my wish is for you guys to go out there and pick up a book today, you know, read something, learn something, go out there and learn about this industry and take the things that you learn and put them into action and continue to build your belief. Back to you, Pastor Denise. Wow. You know, Coach Nakisha, before you go, remember, you know, you, you said many uh, times throughout your coaching today, you mentioned the word belief. I just want to say, let me ask you this, bring your attention to something. 
last week we had a gentleman on the call who spoke, and he was nervous about being on the call. I mean, he's like, he was really there. He didn't wonder if he was nervous. I don't know. He said, I'm just going to be on there really quick. I'm going to sit in and get off. But it was because of his belief, what he believed in, his belief in the product, and his research on it, the one that it worked. He gave one of the best calls that we had. And you're not going to believe who it was. Remember Chris mm-hmm. Day? Chris Day. Remember the mm-hmm. call he did last week? Chris Day, has, uh-huh. he's, he's on the call last week. He's like, well, I don't, I'm not sure what to say. I'm a little nervous. I really got butterflies. I mean, he was really nervous. But when he opened up, all he did was share his belief. And because of that, that's like one of the most shared videos, I think, that we've had so far on the call. Because what he did, he just shared what he believed in. His belief in the product, what it does for him, and what he knew about it. So that's the same thing you do. Like Nikisha said, you can't try to be like anyone else. Just share what it is you know about the product. Because your excitement, your passion, and your enthusiasm about what the product is doing for you is going to come across to the person that's listening. And that's what you want to do. Belief plays a great, a, a great role in the success of what you're doing. And that employee mindset versus the business owner mindset is a transition. If you've been working nine to five most of your life, you got to, you know, it's a transition. You got to come out of that mindset and move into one that you were actually designed to live in. You really were designed mm-hmm. to live in to work your dream and your purpose. But see, you've been programmed. So you need to come out of that program and move into your dream. What is that quote that says, we are geniuses who have been badly programmed? So we got to uh, transition right out there. Right. Yeah. Yeah, of that program. Um, Nikisha, once again, what a great call, girl. You always give me some good stuff to go for. You know what, Nikisha? I take everything Mm -hmm. that you share. If I'm not already doing it, and if I am doing it, I'm going to reiterate, I'm going to do it again. Because it works. These are the tools that really help to birth your dream to reality, that get your business to the next level that you want to go to. And if you listen to Mel and Amy Gill, they are sharing the same thing. And they've been there, done that. They've been in the industry 24 years, full-time. Believe me, they know what they're talking about. And does it work? Oh, yeah, it works. Now, I think Pastor Dale may have joined us by now. Pastor Dale, are you there? I am here. Can you hear me? Hi, Ken. How are you, sir? I'm doing wonderful, wonderful. Well, I tell you, uh, no, Coach Nikisha just nailed it again. Uh, yeah. These are the things that are so, so important. You know, it's people who say, you know, I don't know what to do next. How do I do this? And what do I do? You know, these are the kind of things that they need to hear. They need to be on these calls. They need to be connected to these things because these are the things that's going to make you evaluate why you joined this business, uh, why you stayed in this business, and are you having any success in this business. And, uh, and, and once you go through these little, you know, these uh, coach tips that she gives us, uh, uh, you know, you can evaluate. Am I making, am I taking uh, a massive action? Am I not? What is my belief level? Uh, because, you know, everything that you want to achieve in this company, uh, it's up to you. Personal responsibility. You can achieve what you want to achieve in this company. You know, uh, I understand that people have to do the nine to five until they can do better, you know, but there's a reason why you join this company. You join this company because, there's something the nine to five lacked, and you know that you can't get it in that arena. And so you said, this is an opportunity for me to get what I want uh, and not be subject to this other arena. Uh, think about it. I mean, if, if, if you work in nine to five or whatever your hours are, whatever your, you know, whatever your schedule your work is, um, can you add $20,000 a year to your salary next year? Can you add 40000 you know, does your position pay that? So, you know, you have to ask yourself, you know, why would not do this business? Because this business, I can determine my own salary. I can determine how much money I'm going to make next year. I can determine how much money I'm going to make, uh, make next month. This, this company has given us a great opportunity to set our goals and set our own salaries. And, uh, and it's just, Depends on how much you're willing to work. As as as, uh, as Nikosh, uh, Coach Nikisha said, it's it's up to you. It's hard work, but listen, it pays off. So you know, great job once again. It's great information for us to remember, to implement, to activate, and uh, so we can go out and make a change in everybody's life we talk to, and most importantly, make a change in your own life. Back to you. Thank you. Great, great. Well, I tell you, we have some of the best leaders in the industry right here 
and Team Up Network. We really have some of the best family. You guys, just stay plugged in. You're, you're, you're going to get where you're going. Just stay plugged in. Get this awesome, wonderful information. Apply it. Take action. And the sky is the limit. Great information, Akisha. Well, let's go out to the U.K. to Anita Poole. Dr. Anita Poole is our quote for today. Dr. Anita Poole, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Can you hear me okay, Denise? Hi, Ken. How are you today? I am great. Thank you very much. Wonderful, wonderful call, as always. Absolutely great. Lovely, lovely tips, Nikisha, and great, great words, Denise and Dale. So, you know, a couple of things from some recent articles that's very relevant to us in TEN. We've got Super 10 and Cell Energy High Antioxidants, Natural Antioxidants. Comes from Super Berries and comes from literally antioxidants that are naturally in the body, but also we need to top them up because as we get older and as we have disorders, our stressful lifestyle, our antioxidant level goes up. Well, out there, people are trying to decrease greenhouse gases. People are trying to go for choices that decrease pollution, but the problem is really, really profound. For example, it's become very fashionable now to have wood-burning stoves. People feel that wood is being marketed as something natural. The problem is, in urban areas, there are now so many wood-burning stoves that it's releasing something called particulates in the air. And because the urban areas are getting so crowded and so many wood-burning stoves together, that is actually increasing the particulates in the air to such a high extent that there's a greater incidence of heart attacks and asthma around these, this type of pollution. Now, we know we've got antioxidants. We don't claim to treat, cure, or prevent, but we know we've got natural antioxidants in our TEN sprays that have already helped people like Denise with severe asthma so that she's not on all the treatments that she was before and she's avoided her, uh, you know, possible lung transplant. So, you know... Every single trend I look at, I think, my goodness, we've got such, such amazing natural products in our hands that can help people. There was even an article to say that twice as many women as men are on antidepressants, and the incidence is incredibly high nowadays. We've got people who are on our TEN sprays who they found that their sleep has improved because of the 5-HTP, which then helps to produce melatonin, which helps people to sleep, and that is in our Super 10. We've got people who have been depressed in the past, and their mood is improving because of the 5-HTP in the Super 10. And we've got people who are slimming. We've got people who are feeling better, looking better, got more energy. It's absolutely incredible. I even read you know, a headline um, recently to say that the kids' casino market that is on social media is getting a great, great, great concern because it's an unregulated market. What does that mean? Just like we've seen kids being absorbed by TV too much. A bit of TV, okay, but too much TV, no good for lifestyle then absorbed by video games to too high an extent. Now they're going to be too absorbed by kids' casino market on social media because it's an unregulated market because money doesn't actually pass hands, uh, basically, for certain types of things, but it does for other things. So why is that relevant to us? Because even kids, as well as adults, need to have their nutritional supplementation as good as possible, and they need their antioxidant level as good as possible, because they're not out there get, getting the fresh air, the exercise, 
and the good healthy dietary lifestyle principles. So, you know, we've got something, whether people are young, whether people are middle-aged, whether they're teenagers, whether they're elderly, and of course, anyone over 18 can be earning the income as well. So, you know, Virgil said, fortune sides with him who dares. And we have to dare to be great because we can be great with TEN, because TEN is great. The products are great. The opportunity is great. The pay plan is absolutely fantastic. The company is wonderful. The owners are absolutely visionary and great people. So Sally, Sally Hogshead said, success is not about being the best. Success is the process of becoming your best self. And so, you know, it's so great that, Nikisha has focused on personal development today because it's personal development that helps us in the process of becoming our best. You know, personal development is a process. There's never an end to it. We can always develop ourselves on a daily basis. Late Zhu said, he who gains a victory over other men is strong, but he who gains a victory over himself is all-powerful and all-masterful. Henry Ford said, there is not a person anywhere who is not capable of doing more than he thinks he can. So wherever you are, whether you haven't enrolled anyone or haven't shared the sprays with anyone, you can. Whether you're already one star or LCQ club qualified, that is with a BMW or Mercedes-Benz or even a Tesla, you can do more. Wherever we are, we can do more. Epiphius said, no man is free who is not master of himself. Is freedom anything else than the power of living as we choose? And TEN gives us that power to live as we choose, financially and well-being wise. Zen said, you are already complete. You just don't know it. It's all about practice. We all have it within ourselves, but we need to practice it. And that's where Nikisha's personal development, you know, great, great tips today. And lastly, Albert Einstein said, only one who devotes himself to a cause with his whole strength can be a true master, master of himself, and master of what he wants to do. Back to you, Denise. Wow, Dr. Nita Poole, thank you so very much. I love some of the information that you bring to us. You're such on the one on the wood fireplace, my first time hearing that one, and the kids with Tina. We appreciate everything that Dr. Poole brings to us. It really helps us and gives us, um, you know, more education on what we're faced with. Um, a lot of the information that Dr. Poole shares with us is sometimes released first in the United Kingdom. So, we're, you know, we're in a position of favor to get this information firsthand as it's being released. So this is great, great information to know um, as we're um, sharing what we're doing here at Team Effort Network. Well, family, it has been a great call. Coach and Nikisha, thank you once again. Um, let's not forget, family, go to the back office today. Get your tickets for the 10 extravaganza taking place in Las Vegas, March, uh, <laughs> March the 14th, 2015. Um, get those tickets for the prices go up. And, and we're challenging all executive members, all executive members, get your entire team to the event and watch what happens to your business. Get your entire team. If you don't believe me, just ask Mr. Paul Jackson. Get your entire team to the event and watch what happens to your business. Thank you all for being here with us today. Do not forget to join uh, Mr. Uh, one and only Barry Apple will be on the call tonight. That's right, Pastor. Right, Barry? Go tonight. Right, Pastor Joe? Barry Apple's on tonight. 9 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We're here to share more great things about what's happening here in Team F and Network. And join the Spanish call this morning. Chrissy will be on this morning at 9, 10 a.m. Pacific, 12, 10 Eastern Standard Time. Get your Spanish-speaking guests on left to share the very excitement and enthusiasm what's happening in Team F and Network, uh, where they can understand. Pastor, did you have anything to share before we close out? No, no, great call. Thank you guys for coming on and joining us on the call, and we look forward to you tomorrow. Uh, it's going to be a great call. Tomorrow morning, family, 8 o'clock a.m. Pacific, 9 o'clock a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Know this, 
You are loved and you are greatly appreciated. Go out and have a great day and stay blessed on purpose. Mwah. God bless.